Hello everyone and welcome to the introductory video for VEX, which is the new CAD module to go along with Erotic. I've been promising this for a couple years from uh, many requests from users that have asked me for a way to modify the gear shapes that you produce within Erotic. VEX will also become the uh, base architecture for any future additions to Gerotic, uh, various image processing things and so on that I intend to add. In order to display VEX, I'm going to do probably a few videos, but this video will just be an introduction and we'll quickly show you how to use it in the context of changing a gear that you have within Gerotic. So I'm going to start by putting a circular gear on the screen just as a holding gear. And there we have it. I'm going to go back to the tools menu and You'll notice the buttons down here under miscellaneous utilities have changed. The old button that took you to kin kinematics is gone. Kinematics will at some point be reintroduced in VEX. In order to use VEX, you use this CAD button down at the bottom, which till now has been unused, but has been available to you for a while. So I'm going to press the CAD button, and when I do, VEX will open up. Whenever VEX starts, it will ask you which units you're using. And it's very smart to uh, use the same units that you're using in Gerotic. Eventually it'll check on its own, but at the moment it asks you. And then it asks you for a size and where your origin will be. If you're going to deal with Gerotic, you're best putting your origin in the center. Uh, for any other type of drawing, because Gerotic is useful for other types of drawings and imports, um, you could use an origin in the uh, bottom left-hand corner, which would be normal or any origin you wish. At the moment, I'm going to leave it in the center because we're going to do this project uh, with Gearotic. And we'll hit OK. Now, I'm going to stretch VEX out a bit. Uh, I'm using a large monitor at the moment, so uh, positioning of the windows when I'm doing a recording is a little odd. OK, so here's VEX. You get a workstation uh, of the size that you requested. There's a ruler on each side, and there's a lot of options that you can change. However, we'll go into that in future videos. At the moment, let's just see what we can do with Gerotic. You'll remember that I put a gear on the screen. And up here, I can select Gerotic Get Gear. It will give me a list of the gears that are currently on the screen in Gerotic. Uh, let's take the spur gear, and you can see that the gear transfers across into VEX. Let's do a quick modification of this gear so that we can see that things uh, get done. Let's remove a couple spokes. And let's, um, actually, let's remove all the spokes. You can remove things by uh, clicking on them so that they turn red as a selected item and then hitting delete. Or you have a pair of scissors over here on the side with which you can snip anything out. Uh, let's do an operation here. I'm going to select a ruler and measure how wide this gear is because I really just created it at random. It's 55 millimeters. So let's put some slots at about 25 millimeters. We have a slotting tool over here. If you select a contour and then select the slotting tool, we can select a radius and we said 25 would be good. And let's give ourselves six slots, for example. All right, we've modified this gear then by removing um, its spokes and adding slots. This might be useful for creating an anti-backlash gear, for example. If I select the entire gear, go up to Garotic and select Replace Gear, we get the same name list of what's on the screen. We took it from gear, so we'll send it back to gear. We get a message that the gear has been accepted by the drawing, and that's really all you need to do to send it to Garotic. If I switch to Garotic now, and go back to our project screen, you can see our gear now has slots in it. Now the thickness of the gear and so on cannot be changed uh, by Gerotic, but the shape of the gear can. And it's worth noting that um, because you've changed the shape doesn't change the way it would physically work in the simulation. The gears in the simulation work on a set of rules. This will always be whatever module gear it is, a module 5 with 14 teeth, and it will turn as if it was, even if it doesn't have those teeth. As an example, let's go back to Gerotic, or let's go back to Vex, and I'm just going to draw a square over this section of the gear, and then I'm going to select a pair of scissors and snip out various sections of the gear. There. And now let's send this gear back, turn off our tools, select it, and replace it and send it to gear. And if we go back to Gerotic now, we can see that our gear uh, is missing a complete section of itself. But physically, it doesn't know that for simulation purposes. 
So if I, if I tell the pinion module to add a pinion, it will still roll on the missing section of this gear. Um, I just wanted to get that clear so that you knew how these things will interact in simulation. They won't change at all just because you've changed their drawing. Let's delete spur one just to simplify our screen. All right, we're back to our central gear again. Let's see what else you can do in VEX. You don't have to get the gear and you don't have to respect any of its uh, parts, but you do need to have an outside overriding shape. Um, let's create a new gear. Let's say we want to create a kinetic vein. I'm going to select a spiral tool here. I'll select a golden spiral just uh, on the odd event that it might make it look better. And now we'll offset that spiral. Let's give it a uh, three millimeter offset, for example. Delete the contour we used to create it. And now I'm going to create that spiral or select that spiral and we'll do a, uh, a circular array. The circular array simply spins uh, something that you have on the screen. And we'll go into this much deeper in further videos because there are a lot of options. So now we've created a god-awful mess of a bunch of spun um, spirals. I'm going to select them all, and up here in the Edit menu we have commands like Weld, Subtract, and Intersect. I'm going to weld, uh, select Weld. And this turns all of this into a single shape contour, which should be usable as a vein system. Uh, we should have a, a hole in the center for our shaft, though. Um, so I will go down here and select for a circle. Click in center to start it, and then up here in the menu I will type 5 millimeters to lock it in at 5. Turn off our tools, and this should be now replaceable onto erotic screen, and we'll send it back to that same spur gear. And now when we go back to Gerotic, we have a kinetic vein. Now again, Gerotic thinks that this is not a, a kinetic vein. It thinks it's a gear, and it will respect it as a gear when you are uh, trying to simulate it. So you're not going to be able to make thing, new whiz-bang mechanisms from this. But this is useful on its own as an STL, or uh, as an object for machining, because you can send this to the three-axis workbench, and then you're free to cut it with, uh, you're free to generate the G-code and so on that, that you might want. Okay, I'm going to return that to the home screen and take us back to VEX. A couple of points that you must be aware of. I'm just going to delete that object. Uh, we'll go back to Garotic and start a new project. Because the best way to exemplify this is to show it to you. Let's take a grasshopper escapement and add it to the project. Now, if I go back to VEX and I decide to pull those items in, I can pull them in one at a time. You can see the ratchet appears at 0, 0. And this is because in Gerotic, it is located at location 0, 0, if you look up here at the coordinates. Uh, one of these arms is at uh, 0, 083, for example. And if we go back to VEX, you'll see that when we pull them in, uh, here's our main palette, and it pulls in at the right position. It is important that you not move these items or rotate them. Teeth may not always appear in mesh when they appear in VEX because they're processed by a meshing algorithm inside uh, Gerotic. It's important if you're going to use the teeth on a mesh or you're going to use a, uh, a portion of a known item that you've taken from Gerotic that you respect its position and its rotation. You're free to change it all you want. It'll still work in simulation, provided you respect the orientation that it was put into. Uh, the only parts that are important in most pieces that you'll get from Gerotic are single plates, like the location of this lock plate or the location of this flat area here. Everything else can be changed, and it will still work in simulation. A uh, quick example of changing something like this. Let's just put a circle here, select our scissors, select our scissors. To send something back, select it all, and then let's send that back to our main palette. It tells us Gerotic accepted it, 
and you can see it now has a different look than it did. Okay, so now we know you must keep items in their location when you modify them. You're free to modify them any way you want. There are several ways to uh, use tools in VEX. The menu, when you right click, will give you most options. There are more options that you can select and more tools, and we'll go into those in the usage videos for VEX. This is just a quick introduction on how to modify something like a gear and send it into Garotic for processing. You can then save these as STLs or process them as DXFs or get tool paths from them. VEX is also capable of saving your files as DXFs as well and importing, as, uh, and importing files that you might have. Uh, again, we'll go into that in future videos. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to VEX. I hope you have fun with it. It is in beta. Report any bugs that you might see on the form and we can talk about other features that people might want as well. Thank you very much.